Well, good afternoon. I want to thank everyone who is here today. My name is Jody Brockington, and I'm working at the National Urban League on this weekly, or now bi-weekly, New York Urban League and National Urban League, sorry, National Urban League Career Success Series. Today's topic is how to hit a home run for your dream job. We all figure out that we have something we want to do. We have a dream job that we've thought about, or at least we believe we want to have. We don't know exactly where that will be. Sometimes we think it's in one place and end up in another. And today, our guest speaker, featured speaker, William T. Rolak Sr., uh, will tell us how we can find that dream job, how long it takes, what twists and turns it takes in our career, from interview to preparation, research, landing the job, sometimes losing a job, coming back to a new job, and all the ins and outs. Currently, William is employed as the Senior Director of Workforce Strategy, Diversity, and Strategic Alliances for Major League Baseball in the, of in the Office of the Commissioner. And that's a long title, but he deserves every one of them. Uh, he has been in this diversity space for quite some time. He's worked prior at ADECO, and now he's brought those same talents to Major League Baseball. William and I have crossed paths here at the National Urban League and at two different affiliates. Both William and I were presidents of the Young Professional Chapters, William in Long Island and myself here in New York. And we've even shared some ment mentees along the way. Um, another, another place that William and I have crossed paths is we've both been honored as the Network Journal's 40 Under 40. And he's also been honored with the Long Island Business News in 2008. So today he's going to speak about how you can really find your dream job and also if you're interested in a job in sports, specifically with Major League Baseball, some activities that are coming up there specifically, and just how to stay ahead of the curve and use diversity to your advantage to find your next job. William, we're going to hand this all over to you and allow you to take over this presentation. All right. Well, thank you very much, and I want to thank the National Urban League and my friends there for uh, giving me the opportunity to spend some time with all of you today and just share some strategies. And, you know, along with sharing these strategies, I want to make sure that uh, I give you some great nuggets to take away from today's uh, conference call uh, and webinar. But also I want to share some uh, great, amazing opportunity with, with uh, Major League Baseball as well, and a really, really phenomenal uh, a phenomenal opportunity that's coming up uh, relative to getting a job within the industry of baseball. But I think you know, one of the things that we talked about, I think where we want to really get started, uh, for those of you who are on the call, and I know you will be uh, typing in your questions and we'll be fielding your questions out. You know, the only rule of thumb is if you have a question, go ahead and put it in. You know, I know we will do some Q&A as well uh, at the end. And, uh, but if you have a question, go right ahead and, and type it in. And Jody, they already have the information on how to type those questions in, correct? Yes. And All right. it, uh, one more housekeeping thing. If you do need to step away from your computer, please do not put us on hold. Please just hit mute. So we do not hear your music in the background. Thank you. All right. Perfect. And you can see my screen now, right? Correct? Yes. Yes. We just, uh, you may want to go to the full screen mode, but yes, we see your screen. Perfect. Perfect. All right. There we are. All right. Great. So let's take off with just talking about some general strategies. I know, you know, many of you who are interested in changing jobs, making that next, next move or or even moving up in the organization you're currently in. Uh, uh, those of you who have been either downsized, we'll talk a little about that as well, and you know, you've been having those interviews and not being able to land that opportunity. But there's a couple things that I, that I want you to focus on. I mean, I think for everyone uh, on the call today to focus on, and the first thing that I'm gonna say is, is how, you, how you are feeling. And I think that's where we need to start. How are you feeling about the job search? How are you feeling about yourself? Um, how are you feeling about your resume? Uh, so here's the things that I want you to think about. And one critical thing is in the job search process, you're going to have to, you know, keep that upbeat attitude. You're going to have to listen to Pharrell's song, Every Day You Wake Up, Be Happy or Happy. Uh, you need to be happy in this process. 
Um, it's very difficult to sell yourself if you're not feeling well about yourself. Uh, relative to, you know, uh, going out and building that presentation and, and having those dialogues, you know, network, 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 um, you know, let your, you know, closest network of friends, colleagues, and associates uh, understand what's next for you. Uh, you know, especially for those of you who are passive job seekers, you know, you have that job now and, and uh, you're up, I'll flip from both sides of the house, but if you have a job, sure what that was but uh, if you have a job now and you're you're a past job seeker you know let your personal network know what's next you know what you're thinking of what's your next move if you are currently in the market then be very specific <laughs> with everyone that you know about the job that you're looking for a lot of times we go to these networking events and opportunities and we talk about you know uh, we meet a lot of people but we, we share our backgrounds but we don't share you know, what's our future state and what, what should be coming up in the foreground for you. So share with everyone what's next. Uh, another piece that I want to give you that I think is important uh, as it relates to your resume. You know, a lot of times you're here, um, individuals talk about, you know, the one-page resume or the two-page resume. Well, the only piece of advice I'm going to give you today on this is that whatever is in your hand that you're presenting to that HR executive or that recruiter or that hiring manager, you need to be proud of that document. You need, to, you need to feel confident when you're passing it over. Um, I think if you're, you know, one of those individuals with, you know, over 10 years plus of experience um, and you haven't shifted over to a functional resume yet to highlight your, your major achievements in your career um, and you're trying to cram that information into one page and you're feeling a little, uh, um, you're, you're feeling uh, some way about that, <laughs> then, you know, you need to actually expand that to a two-page resume. It's about, again, it's about how you're feeling about your presentation um, and understand that, that you're in control of, of that part of it. So, you know, feel confident about how you're moving forward with that piece. Another thing that I, that I want to make sure that uh, you do in the job search process, um, you know, relative to the, the interview process is understand that the, it is an interview process. You know, it's not just the interaction portion of the interview that you need to be concerned with. It is. It starts with resume and cover letter, and it really ends on your start date. And a couple of things that I'll give you uh, that I think are critical, for those of you who have, are in process right now, you have a, an interview scheduled uh, for, you know, you know Friday the, the, the 28th of this week, and it's at 10 a.m., you know, be sure between now and Friday or now and the end of the day on Thursday that you send a confirmation email. You know, send an email saying, hello, if it was to me, say, hello, Mr. Rolak, I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to meeting with you on Friday um, to discuss the position of dot, dot, dot. Looking forward to speaking with you and share more about my background and how I can, you know, be a contributor to this particular role. Uh, so reiterate your excitement, reiterate the, the positivity, and confirm. Another piece of that advice that I always give around confirming the interview prior to your interview is that you want to let them know who's coming to dinner. And as a part of that, I always say for those of you who have these spectacular, uh, cover, not cover letters, but these spectacular letters of recommendation, you know, a lot of times we make a decision to give those letters of recommendation after the interview is over. Uh, where I'm here to tell you the place you, you place those Letters of recommendation is actually in your uh, confirmation email. And you can always say, hello, Mr. Rolick, I've attached two of my letters of recommendation for your review. The position you put the hiring manager in at that point or the person that you're meeting with, they are not going to let you come to that meeting without reviewing those letters of recommendation. A lot of times at the end of the interview, that letter of recommendation may not be the differentiator for you, but I can guarantee you before the interview, it can be a a welcome differentiator for you and build more excitement about who you are and your endorsements before you actually come to the meeting. Uh, at the meeting, I always say, you know, you know, if you're in the interview process, you know, bring in and insert those, I call it during the silent pause, when the recruiter or the hiring manager is kind of reshuffling the deck, kind of you know, looking for that next question to ask you from your resume, it gives you an opportunity to talk about the founders, the competitors, the market share, 
uh, the growth opportunities, the things that you've researched. It could even be down to the debt, the debt to equity ratio <laughs> for a particular business. It could be the stock price. You know, make sure you Google that organization that morning before you go to an interview to see what else is out there uh, about that organization that day or something that you can share. Uh, as much as you can, you know, research your your uh, interviewer, the person that's going to be uh, uh, interviewing you as well. Uh, I think it was a, a, a great advantage for me to ask the president of one of the companies that I interviewed with, uh, and I actually earned earned the opportunity to get the job there. Uh, but I, I, I asked him about his experience at his undergrad education, you know, and what was that like going to that particular school. So it showed that I did a little bit more research on the individual and, and asked him about that. And, and he was very impressed with that, that I knew where he went to undergrad, you know. And, and so those things, I think, are critical. And the last couple of things that I'll give you before we move into uh, the presentation that's on the screen uh, is, you know, after that interview, be sure and send that thank you note. It doesn't matter how it comes. We love to receive them. It can come via email or snail mail. You know, snail mail has not gone away completely. We really, it's very impressive to get those handwritten thank you notes. Um, and it just, again, it sets you apart. And even before, you know, uh, before you start, you know, a lot of times we get the uh, offer letter or we receive the offer via email or verbal, I would say always ask for, you know, especially those of you who are salaried, always ask for that offer letter in writing, and then reply back with your letter of acceptance, including everything in that offer, in your acceptance letter that states, a lot of times you get to sign the letter, that's fine too if you just want to sign the, 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 the agreement and, and send it back. But what ends up happening by you writing your letter, again, it reiterates your excitement, uh, it reiterates the point of, um, of you accepting that offer, and then bullet point in the offer your salary, your benefits, could be benefit start date, uh, it could be, uh, you know, uses of, usage of the uh, company car, uh, it could be usage of the, uh, the black card, <laughs> you know, the reference rest black card. Could be usage of the layer jet, whatever it is that or, that organization is giving you. You want to bullet point those things back in that acceptance letter. And then I always say, you know, about two days out or before you start, um, you know, the additional professional thing to do is send a, another email because again, there is an expectation now because you've done such great follow up during the process uh, from confirming the interview, the thank you note, the acceptance letter. You know, and before you start, it's always good about 48 hours out to send an additional note to your hiring manager and say, hey, I'm excited, looking forward to starting on Monday morning. If there's things that you need to bring with you to complete new hire paperwork, state that I will bring X, Y, and Z with me. Um, and uh, just reiterate your excitement about starting on Monday and joining the team. You know, a lot of times, you know, uh, as hiring managers and HR executives, uh, there's times where we have done all of the all of the all of those great things and gotten up to the start date, and the individual who we've made the offer to to has who has accepted the offer, um, and we will call this very unprofessional, but they don't show up. So, <laughs> you know, the odds are they got another job that's paying more, and they didn't notify us that that that, that happened, and that that has happened, and uh, so. If that's the case, always notify, uh, you know, the organization that did give you the offer. Um, and also, even if the organization does not give you the offer or does not hire you for the particular job at hand, always send a thank you note because you could have been number two. And a lot of times we don't take that, that uh, point under consideration that if I'm number two and number one doesn't work out, then I can just ask this question. It's a rhetorical, but guess who we are calling if that person doesn't work out within the next several weeks? We're going to call that person who was number two. So you never want to walk away from any opportunity, uh, whether it yields the results you're looking for or not, without saying thank you. So always say thank you in that, that process. And I will pause for a moment just to see uh, uh, Jody and Don if there's any questions that uh, I would need to respond to at this point. questions at this point that relate to what you're directly speaking of, and we'll bring them back um, at appropriate time. Excellent. Excellent. Keep those questions coming. They will field them for me. So 
So with that being said, and just giving you those particular nuggets, and, and in the recap part of this webinar, I will be more than happy to address those questions or any other related questions that, I, that um, are there. But let's talk about uh, beyond the, the strategy. Now that you got some strategy nuggets, let's talk about how to hit a home run for your dream job and what that's going to look like for you. Well, I can tell you this, and one thing that, that you can see here is my point of contention is why am I working for Major League Baseball? Um, it's not just about the excitement and the feel of entertainment. It's about the legacy of baseball for me. And being in this particular role in workforce diversity, uh, the excitement of my opportunity to be here is that I'm working off the back of Jackie Robinson and many others who led the way uh, for diversity in baseball. I think one of the things that I think is critical to understand about this particular legacy is that this was seven years before state-sponsored school segregation. Uh, was declared unconstitutional. This was many more years before uh, the Civil Rights Act and many, many more years before the Voting Rights Act. So for Major League Baseball to take a stance on inclusion uh, and, you know, level the playing field as it relates to sports, uh, it means a great deal to me and the reason I am here. I think it's important that everyone else understands that there are other diversity initiatives in baseball beyond uh, the general uh, points that we are talking about here today. And um, I think what's also critical to understand is that the on-field diversity task force that was launched by the commission last year is, uh, you know, looking at on-field diversity, but particularly African Americans in the sport. Uh, the commissioner has developed a phenomenal task of individuals, um, everyone from owners to uh, you know, right down to scouts, uh, NCAA, uh, educators, uh, you know, vice president of baseball operations, Frank Robinson, who's a Hall of Famer, who's in charge of the uh, baseball development end, um, and you'll see uh, HBCUs represented there as well with uh, Roger Cater, who's the baseball head coach at Southern University. So they're looking at this diversity issue across the spectrum of baseball and um, are driven and committed to uh, making some impact and giving back some recommendations that we plan on implementing within the next uh, several months or so. So more to come on the Commissioner's Diversity Task Force. Uh, another on-field diversity initiative, which I think is really cool, is our RBI program, has served more than a, uh, 1 million young people since 1989. Uh, we've had 14 players who entered the 2012 first-year first, first year player draft from the RBI program. Uh, and many people, you know, don't know that um, softball is a big part of our youth initiatives as well. Um, everything from softball, and there's a uh, shot of our Los Angeles girls softball team there uh, who competed in the, um, in the games as well. And the, the little guy there is actually one of our pitchers from Harlem RBI. So um, we're looking forward to seeing him in, in the majors one day, very soon. Uh, the other on-field diversity initiative is our urban youth academies that are around the world in many places, serve more than 10,000 young people. More than 90% of those individuals are diverse. Uh, and this is an opportunity where, you know, we support them through the process, through the training, through the development. And again, 17 players in 2012 entered the first year player draft from our Urban Youth Academies. So here's an interesting uh, event that's coming up here in New York City on April 14th and April 15th. And April 15th, many of us know, many of our professionals who are on the call today know that April 15th is tax day. But it's not only tax day in the world of baseball, it's also Jackie Robinson Day. So we're very excited to have this event here in New York City uh, on Jackie Robinson Day. It is absolutely a major league sports first. Uh, you know, we're the first to do something of this magnitude um, of this kind in the sport of baseball and in sports in general to have a diversity conference that focuses on uh, those who are interested in doing business with baseball. So those procurement executives are uh, uh, part of this conference. Those small businesses, entrepreneurs who are looking to do business with baseball, as well as job seekers. Um, who are looking to work for baseball. There are our partners in pulling the summit together. This is actually the third summit. The first one was held in Chicago in 2012. Uh, 2013 was held in Houston. 
Uh, that one was last year in July. I'm sorry, in June of last year. The first one was in July. Uh, this one being a little bit earlier in the season, we'll say, and that being April, which gives um, us a great opportunity where there's still many positions, especially internship positions as well as small-time positions, open during the time of the summit. Uh, the summit in a nutshell uh, uh, are our heads of procurement, our heads of HR, so you're meeting those who plan to attend the summit. You are meeting with our decision makers. Uh, so it's not, it's not just a simple career fair. We call it the ultimate engagement model, uh, where people have received jobs through the networking process or the networking side of the actual summit. But everyone, all 30 clubs are represented. Um, all of our centralized offices are represented, the commissioner's office, MLB Network, MLB.com, the minor league central office out of St. Petersburg, and we have about eight or nine uh, minor league clubs that will also be participating. So it's, it's a full uh, two-day immersion truly in the sport of baseball. Uh, this is a great slide. It really just shows and states that they came from all over the country. On average, we have about 50% of the attendees from the state where the diversity business summit is being held, and 50% who are out of state. Uh, a couple success stories on here, one being Danielle Lugo, who's third from your right-hand side on the top row with that big smile there. She was uh, is a graduate of Morgan State University. Uh, she was on the shuttle bus from Georgia Brown Convention Center on the way to Minute Maid Park. For those of you who have been there, you know that's probably a five-minute ride, if that. Uh, she ended up sitting next to Pat O'Connor, our president of minor league baseball, and having a conversation. I'm sure Pat probably said, hi, young lady, you know, what's next for you? What do you want to do when you grow up? And where do you see yourself in the world of baseball? And she began to tell him that she played softball all her life and wanted to continue to be in a part of the sport. So I can tell you now her success story ends with her now living in L.A. and working for the MLB Youth Academy uh, there as a softball instructor. Uh, there's, and again, no rhyme or reason of how these people ended up on this slide, but we do have a couple, at least three success story images on this slide. Another young lady from Houston, Texas, now lives in Arizona. She now lives in Phoenix and works for the Arizona Diamondbacks. So we've had some great stories. Uh, we've done a, a phenomenal job with suppliers. Uh, just in two years alone, just from this event, we are well over a million dollars in new uh, supplier revenue uh, generated for our, these entrepreneurs. So, um, and, and many jobs, both internships and full-time opportunities, uh, have been awarded from the actual summit. Everything of great value always has a cost, um, so there is a fee to attend the summit, um, $150 for job seekers, which I call an investment. All these are investment investments, I call them. Uh, entrepreneurs who are interested in attending the trade fair only is $250, and entrepreneurs who are selecting matchmakers, and they can actually meet with two major league clubs of their choice and one minor league club of their choice uh, is $400, and of course those are limited um, and pretty much on a first-come, 1st first serve basis. So those of you who are interested in attending the summit, my point of contention is register. I would say register now, but register after the after the webinar. <laughs> so right after the webinar, jump in there and click that link to register. One of the points of contention around the job seekers is that uh, uh, each club uh, will be going into our portal and researching resumes to schedule exploratory interviews at the summit. Each club has about nine slots on Monday and nine slots on Tuesday. Uh, one of the points I think is very key to know is that registration does have a limit. Uh, we limit the number of registrations to 500 for both job seekers and entrepreneurs because those who do decide to attend, we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to have an intimate discussion with our decision makers and not be standing in a line all day you know, trying to meet with someone. So, uh, again, just a great opportunity for you to, you know, uh, work the room. And every point, we call it, again, the ultimate engagement model, because as a job seeker, you can hang your credential around your neck at registration Monday morning, April 14th, and turn around and bump into John Quinones, who's actually in that first picture there with job seekers sitting there. He's our vice president of recruitment here at Major League Baseball, here at the commissioner's office. So that, just turning around and, and meeting John, and everyone has credentials which tell which club they're with, which baseball entity they're with, what their name is. 
so you will know right off, um, you know, who that individual is, is and where they're, what organization, part of the organization they're connected to. And for those of you who are on the line who are interested in internships, uh, there still will be internship opportunities available at the time of the summit for this, this summit. Yankees are our partner and co-host this year. Um, so that's exciting. These are just some of the testimonials. I won't spend a lot of time on these slides, but there is some te great testimonials from attendees, both from MLB Club as well as uh, both on the partnership side and entrepreneur side. These, again, are just some additional testimonials from the summit. We do a lot of feedback gathering to continue to perfect the summit moving forward. Of course, uh, this is probably more of an eye test. <laughs> I will not ask you to cover one eye and, and read any part of this, but uh, it just it gives you a depiction of, of a lot of the activities that are happening at the summit. Uh, and there's a lot of activities happening during the course of those two days. And I'll give you some more details on the next slide. So again, just some of the summit highlights. On Tuesday morning, there's an ownership roundtable. Uh, you get to hear from our leadership from the top. Uh, the gentleman who's posted here in the other picture is our CFO, Jonathan Merrill. He's the Chief Financial Officer for Major League Baseball. He moderated the panel last year. I believe we will have Jonathan on the panel this year as a part of the discussion. Some other highlights are, of course, we talked about matchmakers. Business briefings is a big highlight of the summit, so you get a chance to hear from many of our professionals. And these are coming in the form of panel discussions and presentations. Uh, and uh, uh, Monday morning, uh, Monday morning and morning, Monday afternoon, we have presentations around the employment perspective, doing business with baseball, baseball operations. Uh, on Tuesday morning, we have business briefings that focus on our foundations, charities, and strategic alliances. Uh, we also have a uh, briefing on in the community, and then some of the business briefings repeat from from Monday. Networking is paramount, and throughout um, on Monday at the end of the day, we bus everybody. We take everybody to Yankee Stadium to a, for a phenomenal reception uh, with some great dignitaries, owners, etc. cetera, uh, on Monday, late day. These are just photos here from, from Houston, some of our attendees from Houston last year. And one of the other exciting things that's happening this year, we are, it's a pleasure to have with us Rachel Robinson, uh, Sharon Robinson, uh, as well to have the Robinson family with us. We will be doing an exclusive viewing of 42. For those of you who have seen it, you know how exciting that movie is. Uh, but this will give you an opportunity to meet and greet with Rachel uh, and Sharon Robinson. And there's another exciting thing that I can share on the call today is that uh, they will be launching their new uh, premium clothing line called Legacy 42. So we are excited. They're going to be doing some giveaways uh, at the expo floor on Monday. There's an opportunity for you to take photos with, with Rachel, Sharon, uh, the Jackie Robinson jersey will be there. Uh, we will have a photo uh, op with the World Series trophy. Um, and I've, I've gone through LinkedIn profiles now and I'm seeing many, many LinkedIn profiles with the uh, image of uh, our previous attendees in the World Series trophy on LinkedIn. So uh, if you see any of those images, that's where it's from. It's from the first visit summit. Uh, and, and not to mention, the ex one of the other exciting highlights of the summit is that everyone who attends get a ticket to the celebration of Jackie Robinson Day at Yankee Stadium. Yankees will be playing the Cubs uh, on April 15th. And again, we bust everyone to Yankee Stadium for the game. Uh, it is really a, a monumental occasion on, on multiple accords. One, as we know, Jeter is retiring, so you get a chance to see Jeter play in his last Jackie Robinson Day game. Um, of course, without Mariano, this will be the first game without an active 42 uh, on the roster uh, there at Yankee Stadium. And the Yankees this year will be honoring uh, a phenomenal man who lived a phenomenal life. The Yankees will be unveiling a new monument in Monument Park uh, on game day in honor of Nelson Mandela. And so we are pleased to be a part of this and have this as a part of our event. Uh, uh, and uh, to have members of uh, 
uh, the South African consulate present, to have members of the Mandela family present, uh, to have the Robinsons present is going to be really, really a, a historical occasion that we will take part in because of all of the summit participation as well. There are sponsors for the event, and that is to simply share that sponsors who are there also recruit from the event, and we've had success where our sponsors have recruited great talent from the event as well. Uh, diversity Summit attendees, I think one of the key things here, we talked about most of the attendees here. Uh, again, this event is both for those who have, have uh, who are experienced hires as well as grad students, undergrad students. We even have some high school students that attend this event as well who are interested in a life in sports uh, in the front office side and they are getting way ahead of the curve and making the right introductions now. We also have other summit sports guests, if you see there at the bottom of that list, and that is actually individuals from NBA, NFL, Major League Soccer, Major League Hockey. Uh, so there are attendees who are, um, participate uh, from other sports as well, and NCAA as well. So there will be leaders from those sports who will have been attended as well. This is just some of our demographics, uh, especially on the job seeking education side, well over 70%. Uh, bachelor's degree and post-grads, about 4% last year from associate degrees, and that 18%, of course, again, uh, uh, high school students who are in attendance uh, to learn more about baseball opportunities. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, last but not least here is unparalleled access. Uh, if you go to our website, uh, mlb.com forward slash diversity summit, uh, there's a page there that's named the uh, uh, Home Field Advantage, and you can click on any of these uh, logos and go directly to uh, those organizations' website. I think one of the things that's critical to know about the summit as we wrap up this portion of the uh, call today in the webinar is that you really need to build a strategy, you know, build in a strategy of which teams, which clubs you want to make sure you meet with at the summit. Um, and uh, make your checklist, you know, do your research and make a checklist and make sure that you um, are ready to come with your, your best game, your passion, um, and especially your passion about, about what you do and how that can contribute to the success of baseball. I think that's a critical point as well. You can also follow us on social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Uh, so please feel, feel free to follow us and, uh, you know, track updates leading up to the summit. And uh, many of our success stories post summit as well. Uh, there's always a great media campaign. Uh, this is a, just a snapshot of some of the media and press we received from last year's uh, event. And uh, we've hired a local minority PR firm here out of New York. Uh, Igami Consulting, which is actually helping us with all of our PR this year. We're very excited to have them as a partner for us and working with us to really get the word out uh, about the summit and this year's event. I will share my contact information and uh, we will open the floor for Q&A. Great, William. Uh, I hope everyone, um, you know, I got quite a few questions here, so we'll uh, start kind of from the top and how do they kind of flow together. Um, a couple of folks did have a couple of questions that came after um, you started. Sure. Um, you had mentioned that it's really important to research the interviewer and how key that can be. What things, like what are the top five, three to five things that would be impressionable to an interviewer? So if I was interviewing with you or Wendy or anyone, would you know? Would you realize that I actually did some research on you? Like that's what they wanted. What what are those things that I should know? Clearly, I don't need to know everything about you yet. Um, <laughs> but what would I need to know if I was interviewing with you? Well, I, I think one of the key things we all get excited about our undergrad experiences. You know, we might not even know the mascot for grad school, but I can tell you one thing: we we you know, had a, a more intimate experience undergrad. So knowing, you know, being able to talk to somebody about their undergrad degree, uh, being able to talk to someone about, um, you know, their career journey and to say, hey, uh, you know, William, I see you started out at, you know, Bedford Armor, you know, company on Long Island, small armor car company. Wow, what an amazing journey. 
You know, I see you spent the last, you know, eight years in diversity. You know, and now it's a lot easier to do that research versus back in the day when we only had kind of standard and poor as executive enlistings, if anybody remembers that. <laughs> so with the advent of the Internet and all of the great things around LinkedIn, it, it makes it much more convenient to get that information. I think uh, one of the other things I think is critical to know, maybe it's a recent article that was written uh, by that individual, or, and last but not least, any recent success. You know that that individual has had or has been honored by, and I know Jody, you mentioned our travels and successes with being honored by the Network Journal in 40 Under 40. And I think if someone said that to me, I'd be very impressed that they did enough research to find that out about me and about my background. Another similar question, um, which sure. relates to it too, is how much? What? What about the company? Should people really show that they've done their due diligence as well? I mean, does, does it depend? People wanted to know: Does it depend on the position you're applying for? So, if my if I'm applying for a finance position, for example, do I need to know more about your, you know, your budget and you know how your finances are for the company versus if I was maybe going for a corporate affairs or an HR job? What you know? What about the company? should they really show that they've done their due diligence? Absolutely. I think a, a couple things. I know I, I drew reference to earlier about the debt to equity ratio. And I can tell you there was a company that I worked for that was liquid, totally liquid. Uh, and if any of you uh, check my LinkedIn profile, you'll know who that company was. That was totally liquid, but that is not around today. And at the time and during my interview, you know, I knew what the debt to equity ratio was. And I talked about it, but I talked about it from the standpoint of HR and uh, the fact that, you know, how many times we start something with a budget and the budget gets cut and how frustrating that is. And to come to this company that's liquid, uh, that's a two-to-one debt-to-equity ratio, uh, you know, uh, how, fat, how, how, how grateful I was to being a part, to, you know, to being a part of that, that role and in that organization. I think another piece around is the general perspective. Absolutely, you should know a lot of, uh, you should garner as much knowledge as possible around the position, and there's ways to do that uh, as well. But definitely the general perspective that we all uh, need to know, uh, founders, competitors, uh, you know, trajectory of the company, when it started, who are the competitors, what are the regional dynamics of where you're working within the organization, uh, is it regionally, is it global focus? You know, knowing what's next for them, is it innovation, where they're creating new technology. So you want to, and I always say this simple aspect of it, uh, Jody, is research, research, research. But face it, you're never going to all the information there is to know about the company. So feel very confident in doing the research that you've done, that you've done enough research, that you have some things that you can throw out there, again, during those silent pauses that will create a differentiator for you in the process. But research, research, research. Great. Um, the other question that came up, and I will also put a plug in for the National Urban League, is they wanted to know if you are, you know, accepting resumes at Major League Baseball. And I also said since you guys are one of our partners, that they can also upload their resume to the NULjobsnetwork.com so that they have an opportunity to not only look at your fabulous jobs, but um, to uh, look at uh, other folks that, like yourself, HR directors and executive firms that are looking at our population who put their, their resumes into our network. So if that is a possibility, where would they send them to? I would say yes, yes, and yes. So where they would send them to, you want to go to mlb.com forward slash careers. Now, I'll give that again. MLB.com forward slash careers is where you want to go uh, to look for those job opportunities and upload your resume. But I do want to make it very clear that every job we post, we get thousands upon thousands of responses. So understand, you can get a job by uploading that resume with Major League Baseball. But the advantage of attending the summit and meeting these HR executives in person is your advantage in this process. Because you want 
them to get a chance to, to say hello, meet you, and you deliver your 60-second, your amazing, phenomenal 60-second commercial with them. A uh, great example of this, I was just out in Chicago uh, recently, out at the Chicago Cubs. Had a great conversation with the vice president of HR there, Brian Robinson, who has a stack of resumes, his top 25 from the last two summits, on his desk. And he said, these were the people who wowed me at the summit. And every time an opportunity comes up here at the Cubs, I go to this stack first. And because at baseball, we want to ensure, and particularly my role and my responsibility as uh, Senior Director of Workforce Strategy and Diversity in which in Strategic Alliances, is to ensure that every opportunity, we have a diverse slate of candidates. So those who attend the summit, you know, primarily get, you know, really first pick of opportunities to be sourced from because they were at the summit and they met our executives in person. They are going to go into the database. They are going to do the search. Um, they are going to search from our web portals and things of that nature. But to meet those individuals in person at the summit is the advantage. Excellent. The other question that ties into this directly and then right into the next question is, you mentioned that there's internships at MLB. Are they paid or unpaid? And um, do you know what cities they're in? So. Almost every club that we have has an internship program, and many of those internships are paid. Uh, here at the commissioner's office, uh, our internships are paid here. And uh, here at 245 Park, on an average, every summer, we have about 120, a little over 120 interns here in this office <laughs> alone. Uh, so understand across the industry of baseball, there's probably about a thousand interns hired every summer and every year. Some internships run through, uh, may run through the entire season, uh, may start in February and run to October. Uh, some of our clubs have fall internships, some have spring and summer. Here at the commissioner's office, we have a summer internship program that runs for 10 weeks. And, you know, depending on what department you're in, uh, if you're in events and hospitality, then you travel with the team. You participate just as a member of staff. You know, uh, you know, many of our interns participated with the All-Star Game here at New York Mets because they were a part of that team. So uh, you really get to do the work of the department. So, uh, and many of those interns uh, are just... A, just to be clear, uh, out of that 120 that we have, 120 plus, just here at the commissioner's office, are not just only from New York City. So I don't want anyone to think that uh, it's a, a local internship program. It is absolutely not. About half of our interns are from, from around the country. And many of our colleges here in New York City, uh, St. John's uh, and others, actually host students um, on their campuses during the summer for those who are in New York City attending internship programs. So, you know, don't let New York rule you out of, uh, because it's New York, rule you out of accepting an internship here if you are from another state, because there is opportunities to live here and do the internship during the course of the summer. Hopefully that helps. I think, yeah, I think unfortunately this caller stepped away, but I do, her question is very important to me too. Sure. Um, she wants to know if there's an effort to include more women in the MLB as well. She said she was looking at your long list of commissioners and they, she on the task force, and she only saw two. <laughs> mm -hmm. So between you and Wendy and the rest of your group <laughs> there, um, you know, are, have, is there initiative for uh, hiring more women into Major League Baseball? And if so, in what areas? <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. This, the, our diversity initiative is the initiative. And everyone plays part in that. And that's from the commissioner uh, across the organization. Um, uh, commissioner Bud Seeley, you know, in his 21 plus years in this, in, in this particular role, he has been the catalyst for the increase of diversity across the sport and the mainstay of diversity on field as well. Uh, under his leadership, we launched the Diversity and Inclusion Program here at Major League Baseball, and there are many many, many phenomenal women who work within the sport of baseball as well, many of which will be participating uh, in the summit, either on panel discussions or business briefings. Uh, you know, many of our senior vice presidents, vice presidents of HR, uh, who are phenomenal women, will be there as well. So, you know, um, all of our 
women who are on the call today will get a chance to interact with them as well. Uh, but it is paramount that we continue to drive more women into the sport of baseball uh, uh, across all of our facets of, of what we do. Excellent. These next two questions are kind of combined. Sure. Um, they're both from uh, the area of security um, and police work within MLB. We have one uh, caller who, or listener who definitely has been in the business for quite some time, has 30 years experience and constantly sees how, um, you know, younger workers, or seems to be targeted towards those who are younger um, and have a lower salary level. And then in general, are there opportunities, you know, at the summit uh, for individuals who are uh, interested in the security slash investigation sector of MLB? And maybe that crosses over more to the vendor side. Um, so just kind of a question of what, what is available in MLB and security, and then how do you guys balance out, you know, years of experience, age, and all of that? Excellent, excellent question. Well, a big part point of contention with diversity is uh, diversity of age and the multi-generational workforce. And, uh, you know, not only are we, you know, recruiting millennials uh, uh, as well, but we are creating across generations. And especially when it comes to security and uh, our uh, task force, commissioner's task force, security task force, and every uh, bit of our security work that's done at stadiums are all done with very, very seasoned individuals who understand um, all aspects of uh, securing a location, emergency evacuation, um, everything that's related to uh, ensuring that our fans and, and everyone else gets, gets the best and most comfortable experience possible. So the fact that this individual has 30 years of experience, absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and the opportunities are, are, are <laughs> totally across the board for this individual because, you know, at every club, as well as the commissioner's office and the central office out of St. Pete, we all have that particular focus, uh, as well as our, our uh, location in Secaucus, New Jersey, uh, MLB Network. So all of those locations, every club and the commissioner's office uh, has a need for top-notch security professionals. Okay. Um, there's a lot of folks asking, if we're unable to attend the Job Seekers event, is there a place where, not just where they can put their resumes, but um, where are they going to be, you know, in future, um, the future summit, just so that people can start planning now, um, you know, where, since you move the summit from place to place, can yep. you explain how you guys select or how they can get maybe on a list so that they're notified? for the upcoming summits or any other efforts that you guys do? Well, absolutely. I, I will say uh, definitely I will uh, just go back to social media. Please, 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 please follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, those announcements about next year will not happen. In, uh, next year's summit will not happen until after this summit. Uh, because it is a summit and not just a career fair, the host club actually makes an investment in the actual activity. Uh, so that is a part of the process of selection. Um, it's the host club making that investment uh, to also support and host the event uh, because, again, they have to give up time at their stadium for the reception. They have to, you know, um, uh, give us a huge block of about 1,000-plus tickets for the game. So there's a lot that the host club has to be involved with the planning uh, from the onset. So, again, that announcement won't be delivered until sometime, again, post-summit uh, because, again, the – Summit activity, the exposure, the press, the recognition for the local club who's hosting it actually goes well beyond the actual summit itself. So that information is coming, so please follow us on social media to stay connected to where the summit will happen uh, next. Excellent. We have a few other callers in who don't particularly fall into any of your three buckets of job seekers or vendors or <laughs> you know, looking for an internship, but are definitely interested because either they teach in the area of sports or civil rights and are very interested in what will be going on. Is there another, like if they were to pay to attend, um, you know, they're not anti-paying to attend. <laughs> they're just not a bucket, so which one should they choose if they so choose to show up um, 
to get the most out of it and the experience, and then also potentially it sounds like they'd all be great advocates, either as professors, teachers, other students, other people interested in jobs, but maybe not there at this time. Um, sure. So, so I, I'm, I'm not surprised that that question came up because it's a, <laughs> phenomenal, it's a phenomenal event. And I know that, uh, again, you know, the focus is job seekers and entrepreneurs. But there are a lot of people that want to learn more about baseball, learn more about the sport, and those who are educators who may have a chance to get their students, you know, to the event next year. Uh, we've invited them out to, you know, partake in the activity and learn more about the summit so they can become champions for next year and then sponsor students to come to the summit. Uh, there is a registration fee for those who want to attend. That dollar value is at 300 uh, So uh, there is no button online uh, to click, at least not at the moment, uh, for you to register online because, again, the summit is not for, for the public. It's literally not public focus. It's, again, the focus is what it is because the event is all about, again, driving more uh, revenue for small businesses and driving more jobs for those who are job seekers. So, you know, our point of contention is not to, <laughs> and this is not to keep you from registering, but our point of contention is not to clutter the lines with someone who just wants to say hello to a club. If our club individuals are speaking to people at the summit, we want to make sure there's an opportunity for them uh, uh, to do new business, or to hire the, uh, an individual to attend. But then, again, we do have general attendance. It is $300. And let's see. You can email me, but the expectation is that you will send a check payable to Major League Baseball. Uh, you can send it to my attention. Um, and not, do not make it out to me. <laughs> but you can send it to my attention, make it out to Major League Baseball, and you can email me with your interest of attending so I can look out for your check. Once the check is received, we will send you the information uh, and the link to register. So that is the process, but the cost is $300. Great. And, then, and that, uh, that, that also includes the game ticket, the reception, and all the everything. You're getting it hot off the press. That's right. So <laughs> there's a couple other. These are our last few. We're at the last few, so if anyone has any last burning questions, get them in now. Um, uh, most, it appears that most of the success stories that you mentioned were really for our millennial population, the 20 something And someone has the question of, you know, what are some opportunities for folks that are a little bit more seasoned, clearly not looking for an internship, but a career change? Um, and kind of tie into that, not just career change, but specific, you know, I think if you can just touch upon some jobs in specific areas, like insurance, financial services, IT, what what kind of jobs are really available at MLB? Because I think people get an, an, a vision. Like if you said you were a psychologist, they think that you're going to have a couch in your office and you might be completely <laughs> different. So what does MLB look like? You know, do I have to know everything about baseball to work there? Oh, if I great. just want to crunch numbers? If I just want to hire people? What what am I doing? What what do you have there for me? What do you have? Great. Great, great question. It, it is the biggest myth around baseball because I've been out to so many colleges to speak and so many professional associations uh, to talk about opportunities within the sport of baseball um, and the opportunities here. And it really runs the gamut. We've heard security, PR, hospitality, communications, marketing, sales, graphics, legal, HR, diversity, Foundations, every club has a foundation. Corporate uh, community outreach, every club has community outreach. Uh, and, you know, the network side of the house, you know, the dot com side of the house, everything under the sun around IT. Many people don't know that MLB.com is the world's largest streaming company. So we stream videos that are, are on ESPN.com, uh, things of that nature. We host you know, their streams as well. Uh, so around the IT platforms, everything, everything under the sun around the IT platforms, uh, facilities, uh, operations, procurement, uh, buyers, licensing, sponsorship, international. Uh, and, and I'm sure I'm missing quite a few, but understand what the summit is for you, for the professional 
uh, seasoned job seekers on the call today. I understand one thing about the summit, because that, that is a question, Jody, that I get asked commonly about what jobs are available. What I want to tell you today, every job is available in baseball. It's a matter of you making the right connection, and when that opportunity comes available, you be the first person that they call to come in for an interview. I've been with Major League Baseball for a little, almost a year and a half. My first introduction to baseball was five years ago. So it took me, you know, my, my timeline was four years. From the time of excitement to the time of hire, from the time of having that first conversation with that baseball executive, you know, five years ago, when I got excited, when they asked me, same question I'm going to ask everyone on the call today, have you ever thought about working for baseball? My answer was an emphatic no. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and look at where you are now. And look at where I am today. But my answer was an emphatic no. So for professionals on the call today, really understand it's about it's about the networking, it's about the engagement. Uh, this is not a it, it, we have a career fair portion, but this is not about the career fair portion. This is about your level of engagement with executives, so you can be the one on the call list. And that's where I position myself to, to have this opportunity today is that when they told me and I said an emphatic no, what got me excited is exactly what Jody asked. I, I, in, in your professional role, I do not need to calculate someone's ERA. That is not my job unless you're in, unless you're, you know, in, uh, you know, unless you want to be in stats and want to be in analytics. We have a lot of analysts at our clubs as well, at the club level, to do analysis on everything from those on the field to those in the stands, to understanding where do we need more revenue, where do we have opportunities to generate more revenue from our fan base. So understand, this is about engagement. So absolutely come looking for what you want and what you want to do within the sport of baseball, but be ready to make that connection so you can be one of the people that, that are called. And, and for my case, when I had that conversation with that executive five years ago, and I said, wow, you know, I could really work in the sport of baseball. At that moment, I said, one day, I'm going to work in the sport of baseball. <laughs> I literally Great. said that. I told people. I made it very public. Uh, I even, one day, coming from, uh, and I'll share this story because it's an Urban League connection. So you guys are getting a very personal story of mine today. Uh, because the professional people on the call really need to understand you do have an opportunity within the sport of baseball. That job you're looking for is going to come available at some point, and you need to be in line to get it. Uh, I was coming back from the New York Urban League Football Classic <laughs> about three and a half years ago, uh, about a, a year and a half well before my first interview here. And I pulled up on the corner of 46th and Park Avenue, with my wife in the front of the car, sitting next to me, and my kids in the back of the car, and they say, why are we on this corner? I said, because I want you to look at this building across the street, which is 245 Park Avenue, and I'm just letting you know today that I'm going to be working there. So understand the opportunity you have at hand is one that you can bring to fruition. And uh, make no mistake about it. If it's something you want, as we all say, claim it but understand that you have the opportunity to create your reality. And if you want that future reality to be here at baseball, which is an exciting place to be, I can tell you today, uh, I think I'm the only person on Long Island Railroad smiling all the way into work <laughs> and smiling all the way back home every day. I literally tell my family, I don't, I don't work in the city. I come and I play, and then I go back home. Uh, so you really can truly great. say... You can truly say that you found your dream job. I absolutely have. <laughs> so we're hoping that other people will dream. In the interim, while I close this up, uh, Will, if you can please just put up your slide with your contact information because some people have asked for that. Sure. And we just sure. thank you for sharing today personally, <laughs> professionally, and from your heart. In addition to uh, let everyone know that you will receive a survey from us along with the slides from today and a recap link so you can listen to it again. And I really do urge as many of you as possible who can get to the summit to go. As you heard, you can find your dream job. You don't know who you're going to meet on the bus ride at the baseball game. It's not always just the interview that gets you somewhere. It's sometimes just the networking. 
So, and then you have an excuse to tell William you heard him and that you're here. So right. I, we look forward to the next time this all happens, and we'll speak with you soon. Have a great Thank afternoon. Thank you so much. Have a great Thank day. Bye-bye. So Bye-bye.